How Frederick Chiluba was swindled by the IMF and the World Bank. In 1991, Zambia was on the brink of experiencing real change. Kenneth Kaunda, who had liberated Zambia from the shackles and chains of the oppressive colonial rule, had become increasingly unpopular, and many Zambians sought real change through opposition leader Frederick Chiluba. Their first president after independence, Kaunda, had been ruling for 27 years and actively resisting new ideas. Zambia was facing economic upheaval and many of its citizens believed that a new leader would bring new solutions. The economic struggles of Zambia had been decades in the making. Zambia, also known as Northern Rhodesia, was part of the Federation of Southern Rhodesia and Nyasaland. The Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland, also known as the Central African Federation, was a semi-independent federation of three Southern African territories, the self-governing British colony of Southern Rhodesia and the British protectorates of Northern Rhodesia and Nyasaland between 1953 and 1963. This unequal agreement channeled many of the resources from Northern Rhodesia and Nyasaland to Southern Rhodesia. In addition, newly independent Zambia was punished for indirect sanctions for aiding liberation forces from Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, who were fighting for their independence and using Zambia as a military base. By 1991, Zambia was struggling economically. The leader of the Congress of Trade Unions, Frederick Chiluba, was favored as the change agent that Zambia needed. Chiluba criticized Kaunda for running the country to the ground, for food shortages, inflation, and corruption. In 1991, Frederick Chiluba ran for president and won as leader of the opposition with 76% of the vote under the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD. He served as president for two terms from 1991 to 2002. When Chiluba became president, he did not fully grasp the implications of Western-style economic policy on African countries like Zambia. He yielded to the recommendations of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and sold many of the country's assets for pennies on the dollar. The IMF and World Bank used the same false prescription of trade liberalization deregulation, dismantling of the public sector, and massive privatization, which of course did not work because they never work. Frederick Chiluba's economic reforms as prescribed by the IMF and the World Bank included selling Zambian copper mines for only $6 billion. To date, some of these mines have generated more than $30 billion for the foreign investors who purchased them. The GDP in Zambia in 1991 when Chiluba took over was 3.37 billion, but only rose to 4 billion by the time he left in 2002. GDP per capita in 1991 when Chiluba took over was $410 and had declined to $377 in 2002 when he left office. The average net worth of Zambia remained unchanged from Kaunda to Chiluba. He also aided in the removal of subsidies on, subsidies on stable food on stable food, while also destroying the local textile industry by lowering import tariffs on textile products. Manufacturing in textile during this time fell from seventy five thousand in ninety one to only forty three thousand workers in nineteen ninety eight. Employment in agriculture fell from seventy eight thousand in nineteen ninety to 50,000 in the year 2000. Despite his campaign to build a better economy, Chiluba's legacy was more socio-political. He is remembered as a champion for democracy who risked his life to challenge Kaunda for a multi-party democracy. He brokered talks between Dos Santos and Savimbi in Angola and talks with the warring factions in Congo. Chiluba is best known as the leader who declared Zambia a Christian nation but when he left in 2002, he had no economic legacy.